No, it's not Helg Schneider. It's me, the clueless drinker. On the final day... On the final day of German Beer Week. 2018. So, we'll put that there. Out of shots. Yeah, bit of a haphazard uh, video series, as it is mostly the case. Yeah, so on the final day of German Beer Week, and um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this actually, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, so, I'm not going to thank you now, I'll thank you at the end, just because I don't want to thank you twice. Not because you're not worth it, because you genuinely are, but um, so I don't waste any of your time. So, um, yeah, it's not the finale that I was expecting to do. Um, I did actually record a finale because it was uh, mixing food with beer. And uh, it seems that the, the phone didn't want to record the video. So, um, oh, well, that's uh, about an hour that I'm not getting back. Um, to be honest, I could say that a lot, really. But, um, yeah, so, the final day of German Beer Week, and uh, we're going to look at something which is going to be a real treat for me, because I've never actually had this beer. Um, I thought I had, but I actually don't think I have. And it's from one of my favourite breweries, who produce one of my favourite beers. Um, as you saw by the title and the uh, introduction, we're going back over to, I always forget the proper name of the brewery, the Brauerei Heller in Bamberg, and we're having a look at the Echt Schlenkeler Lauchbier Urbock, which is clocking in at 6.5% ABV. Best before date is the 7th, 2019, so relatively fresh, especially for the UK. And uh, yeah, so before I get into it, I picked this up from Northern Beer Temple. Um, if it wasn't for John, I would have missed this. Um, John from Northern Beer Temple, of course. He just said, oh, by the way, I've got a new uh, Schlenkerl beer in. So I was like, ooh. And I saw what it was. And then I was like, ooh. Yeah, I think I've almost had every beer that they uh, bottle. Because I think there are some slight variations you can get when you go to uh, one of the tap houses or the brewery premises itself. Probably not. I've not researched it. Yeah, so definitely on the cards to visit uh, the brewery and have this on as fresh as possible on tap, especially the, the Märzen, because that is just like one of my all-time favourite beers. don't know what that symbol is, but whatever. Doesn't that look absolutely wonderful? Um, it's the usual sort of label, but it's got a bit of a golden trim around it, and a bit of a golden trim on the back. Golden trim on the neck label, and the crown's actually golden as well with red. And um, yeah, so very excited to try this. And I even like the way the Urbok is written. It has that sort of like tattoo typography look to it. But um, yeah, I love how traditional uh, the labels are for the Schlenkerler beers. And uh, yeah, brewed according, according to the Bavarian Purity Law in 1516. Sorry, I was about to have something come out my nose then. But yeah, Echt Schlinkerle Urbock is the intense sibling of the classic Mertz and Smoke beer. Exactly like classic, the classic, all its barley malts are smoked over beechwood logs. Its higher smoke malt concentration and longer maturation in the 700 year old cellars underneath Bamberg create a taste profile of most intense smokiness. Beautifully balanced with deep malt sweetness. So, um, yeah, if this is promising to be even more intense than the Mertzen, then I'm going to be a very happy chappy indeed. So, yeah, beautiful label. Uh, massive thank you uh, to John once again for bringing in that German goodness. I uh, even managed to get myself another bottle of the uh, Augustina Oktoberfest beer. So, uh, it's been a very happy uh, last haul that I made so let's get this beer opened and see what we get. Uh, gonna be using my oh I can smell it from here. Ooh, gotta be using my beer moth snifter glass for this. 
Uh, again, still need to get um, brewery specific German glassware. I think he even sells uh, Schlenkerler glass, so I don't know why I didn't pick it up. That would have been a perfect way to end German beer week, but there's always next time because I need to replace my Augustina glass as well. That's about three glasses that I've had, and uh, one I left in Germany, and two have smashed. Not by my hand, though. So, if Paul, if you're watching this, back off. I think I mentioned Paul in, like, a few of these videos now, but, uh, yeah, I know he is a big fan of uh, these beers, and Germany in general, and, uh, yeah, here's to, hopefully, uh, a German trip in the future. Uh, as with James from Rampant Line Beer Reviews, who, as I'm recording this, uh, is now in Berlin. The lucky bastard. Um, I was actually potentially intending to meet up with him, but with the work scheduling and other stuff going on in finances, I had to hit that on the head. But uh, Berlin 2018 and uh, 19, Berlin 2019 and Bamberg 2019, it's going to happen, as well as other places in Germany. Anyway, so I won't gush too much because I've done that enough in this series. But my oh my, how divine is this looking so far? Well, it's definitely got a little bit of a darker head than uh, I was expecting. Uh, a little bit, of, it looks a bit darker than the uh, the Mertzen as well. Um, the lighting's quite dark in here, but uh, when I hold it up to the light, uh, there's really nice, intense ruby hues. It's got a real sense of denseness to it as well. And the beer poured with about one finger's worth of a beige head. Every time I put that glass near me, it just smells wonderful. But uh, yeah, look at that. How handsome is that beer? It really, really is. So let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, yes. Oh, so absolutely wonderful. Smoked malts are just probably one of my favourite beery smells. It's not as uh, sweet as uh, the Mertz, and I'm probably going to compare this to the Mertz a lot, just because it's like the, the sibling of that beer. But yeah, it's definitely more on the sort of savoury side of things. So you get that sort of smoked fish, uh, honey glazed ham, Honey smoke, well, can you glaze? Do you glaze before you smoke or do you smoke it as it's glazed? Because I imagine the honey would intensify if you were to do it that way. But um, yeah, very woody. It's not intensely smoky, but it's a little bit more uh, refined than uh, the Mertzen. Lovely musk. Oh, it smells wonderful. It really, really does. What a joy to sniff. Those are words about three or four years ago I thought I'd never ever utter, but um, that smells fantastic, it really does. Let's just dive in. Prost. Straight away. Ah oh, yes. See, I love the intenseness of the Mertzen. And this is like taking it up to a completely different level. Mm. Ooh! It's so smoky. It's tangy. It's like a slightly spiced roast beef tanginess. Oh, it's so robust and full flavoured. Lovely upper end of medium mouthfeel as well. Uh, ABV is 6.5%, so it's almost getting to around Doppelbock level. Ooh! Oh, yeah, I love the tingling sensation on the tongue. It's absolutely wonderful. It's woody, it's earthy, lovely smoky caramel sweetness to it. There's a real big char in there. But yeah, um, I probably have a Nets and comparison counter on this video if I remember to include it because if you find the Mertzen to be a little too harsh <coughs> wonderful bourbon 
uh, then I would avoid this because it is a little bit more intense. To me, I think it, that is like optimum smokiness. Not too overbearing that it completely overtakes all the other flavours. It blends in perfectly and then this distinct, almost sharpness comes through on the back end. And you get that sort of like, it's like you've inhaled uh, a barbecue. You know why you've been barbecuing and you've like inhaled the smoke. You could smell it on yourself for like hours afterwards. Which under those circumstances, it's not the most satisfying smell. Let's be honest, because you don't want to be asleep and smell like barbecue. Well, sometimes if you're a fat pig like me, that can be nice. But um, this is just... Ooh! See, the Mertzen to me will be probably the most drinkable of those sorts of beers. That's the beer that you can have any day of the week, any time. I mean, to be honest, if you, if I had like a lifetime supply of this beer, I would happily drink nothing else. Don't get me wrong. This just has a little bit more of a sense of occasion to it. And I think if you were to drink a few too many of these, it would get a little bit too rich and intense. But you know what? I would happily be a fool and, in, and session the living shit out of this beer. so wonderful that really really is i knew i was going to love this beer but nowhere near as much as i am oh. drinking this at room temperature i did not want to chill this down because i wanted to get as much flavor as i could even chilled down i think this would still be intense hopefully next time i go to northern beer temple there'll still be bottles of this because I know I say this a lot and never follow through with it, but I would happily rinse any stock that I could of this beer and just like keep hold of it. Uh, this is a beer I want to drink at Christmas, on my birthday. You know, it's got a real sense of occasion. I'd love to share this sort of beer with someone. Having this with uh, a platter of smoked meats, cured meats, Dark, dense breads, smoked cheeses, like really pungent sort of um, lunchtime, but sort of uh, foods. That's going to work wonderfully well. And it's like, do you know what? Stop buying liquid smoke and put a few drops of this in your, in your like pulled pork or whatever, or your brisket. Oh my word, imagine just glazing brisket with this. 20 minutes later. Sorry, I'm just drifting off because this is absolutely amazing. It really, really is. It's got that intensity of smokiness that I yearn for without it going too far. I'm almost at a loss for words at the moment. That's just wonderful. I know it's not to everyone's tastes, but if you love these sorts of beers, you've probably had this multiple times by now. This is definitely not a beer I'd try if you were getting into smoked beers. Start off with the, the lager, then move up to the wheat beer, and then the Mertzen, and then take it from there. Going back to my good friend Paul, PA Brew News, I'm not sure if he has drank this or reviewed it. If he has, his link will definitely down, be down below. But Paul, if you're watching this, I think this beer is yours. Do you know what I mean? This is a you beer. And if you, anyone out there actually who loves smoked beers, again, you've probably already drank this. I can't believe it's taken me so long to get around to this beer. See, I don't know if I am if I love this more than the Mertzen at the moment. Um, I think the Mertzen, as I said, has a bit more drinkability. Uh, well, no, because this is drinking ridiculous. I'm drinking this way too easily. I'm enjoying it way too much. <laughs> the Mertzen's one that you could have three or four bottles of. 
but this is like even though it's sort of like the higher strength ones uh, sort of like the, the smoked doppelbock that uh, Schlenkerler do it's so full on it's probably one of the most full on beers that I've had recently and the only word that can come to mind without getting too soppy and over the top is it's 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 magical. It's an absolutely mesmerising spell. All right, let's not go too far. But it's it's a beautiful beer, and um, yeah, this is like pinnacle. You know, this is. You see, some people might watching this are thinking, "What the fuck is he talking about?" But um, yeah, this is like my love for Germany, pretty much in a glass. And the reason why I've done this series and the reason why I try to have much of an emphasis on German beer and brewing culture as I can because you can have your whales, you can have your, you know, your 100s out of 100s, 5 out of 5s, 10 out of 10s. You can have those beers, you know, the beers that you pay ridiculous amounts for, that you literally trade your house for. But give me a crate of this, and that'll make my year. It really, really would. It's just every sip, it's as fresh as the first time you take a sip. Your, your palate doesn't really, like, climatise or acclimate to that intenseness. It's intense after every sip, and I think that's so wonderful with this beer. So, yeah, it's safe to say this is 10 out of 10. And definitely one of the best beer drinking experiences that I've had this year. And I'm just hitting myself. Ooh! That wasn't hard. Uh, I'm, I'm hitting myself because I've never tried to source this beer before. And I'm hitting myself because I should have bought another bottle. Um, yeah. I think we've found the best beer of German Beer Week. And we've ended... In a much better way than I initially intended to. Yeah, I know it's a bit haphazard. It's always a bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, you know, the whole putting effort, not really putting effort into these videos. But I hope that when I do series like this, you can see that there is passion there. Um, and yeah, it's... It, this is part of the video where Chris from On The Tenth would be looking away and uh, telling me to stop being a soppy bastard. But, um, you know, spending seven years in Germany, probably the best seven years of my life, surrounded by beers like this, just a tiny part of the overall experience. So, of course, I'm going to be biased to German beer. I'm going to be biased to beer styles like this, especially from Schlenkerla. You know, Augustina, Schlenkerla, uh, Schneiderweisser, Paulana. You know, all of these historical, highly regarded breweries. And you just don't get that pretty much anywhere else in the world, I've found. Yeah, you've got your big breweries and your big historical, you know... What's the sort of word I'm looking for? And then, of course, you've got the, the craft boom. I mean, the UK is probably some of the greatest craft breweries in the world at the moment. And Germany is one of those untapped territories. But, yeah, Germany's history with beer... And the classic, yet yeah, bigger than most breweries, almost on macro level. But, for the most part, there's no compromise. There's a consistency, there's a passion. You know, they, they love their heritage, and they don't try and shy away from it. You know, they're unapologetic. And why fix something that's not broken? I'm getting into, like, a big philosophical debate right now and what a beer to have philosophical debates over so um yeah absolutely marvelous beautiful wonderful spellbinding 
just perfection in a glass. And uh, if you've not had this beer and you love smoked beers, do yourselves a favour and give it a try because you will hopefully enjoy it, if not enjoy it more than I have. Because that is a real treat of a beer. And you know what? That cost me like just over three pounds. Do you know what I mean? I mean, of course, if I was in Germany, it cost even less. How crazy is that? Like in the domestic markets, you could pick this up for stupid money. Stupid, stupid money. And even at that price point, the quality is just outstanding. So I can happily justify paying just over three pounds for a beer like this. I would go back to this time and time again. And yeah, it's just absolutely bloody marvellous. And I don't apologise for being overly romantic. Um, I'm probably going to watch this video back as I'm editing. And I'm probably going to cut out a lot of bullshit. And I'm probably going to cringe a hell of a lot. But um, yeah. This is a proper me beer. And um, yeah, it, it's making me reminisce of uh, being in Germany. And it's crazy that an alcoholic beverage can do that. Not consuming the alcoholic beverage and getting absolutely obliterated. But the fact that this can conjure up like memories and emotions just by looking at it and then giving it one taste and it just takes me back to, you know, being in Germany. And uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful stuff, guys. Um, yeah, it's a long video, I know, but uh, were you expecting anything else at this point? So before I uh, completely choke up and uh, cry on camera... Um, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's uh, watched this. I've had great interaction on this series. And I personally think I've ended on a real high with this one. And um, yeah, first beer of the night. And I don't think any beer that I'm going to drink is going to top that. Uh, for multiple reasons. So of course... Uh, if you have tried this, then let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What are some of your favourite beers from not only uh, the uh, Praurai Heller, Schlenkerler beers, but also from beer breweries in Bamberg? I know that, for me, that's even an untapped territory. Um, what are some of your favourite Rauch beers, smoked beers, not necessarily German? What are some of your favourite German beers, craft, macro, mainstream, whatever, traditional? Um, just hit me up in the comments. Um, check out my Schlenkerler playlist, my smoke beer playlist, uh, the previous videos from German Beer Week. Of course, um, the Oktoberfest series that I did last year. Um, of course, if friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed this one, their links will be down below. Check out Northern Beer Temple as well. And uh, yeah, here's to next year. So I've got to, I've got to get planning on what I want to do for next year's uh, celebration of German beer and brewing culture. And uh, yeah, thank you for for sitting through a week of me uh, getting soppy sometimes. But um, that's just the way it is. So thanks for watching, guys. You're all awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me as I drink some absolutely wonderful beers. And I hope you've been drinking along as well, because that's what it's all about. And I'm starting to slobber now, so I think... Funny enough, this video has to be up edited and uploaded for tomorrow. So, uh, last minute saloon. Anyway, thank you for watching. Ich liebe dich, or ich liebe euch, I should say. Uh, vielen Dank. I... Du hast mein Herz. Uh, bis dann. Viel Spaß. Schlaf gut. Und vielen Dank für alles. What the fuck am I saying? Prost. Und auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss.